As Mike Donahue prepares, prepares to retire at the end of this month, we are continuing to look back at the milestones in his career. And tonight, the bizarre story of the Rajneesh Paran. That was, of course, the commune in north central Oregon. It was a hub for the followers of an Indian guru, but things got out of control when the state investigated them as a threat. And, you know, in retaliation to the people of Oregon, they poisoned a salad bar at the Dallas, sickening dozens of people, Mike. Mm. Uh, there were so many stories with the Rajneeshis and Rajneesh Param. What sticks out in your mind? I remember the hatred that some Oregonians would spew at what they called a, a cult. At first I thought it was racism, but eventually events seemed to justify their anger. A flash flood of Muddy Creek 150 years ago gave a sheep ranch its name, the Big Muddy. <laughs> 30 years ago, an invasion of red-shirted sunyasins changed the ranch's name to Rajneesh Param and attracted a tidal wave of suspicion. The commune city would eventually grow to 7,000 and be called a religious cult with a political agenda. To the disciples of Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, the ranch was holy ground, prepared for their Indian guru who came riding in a Rolls Royce. So tell those guys this is the only religion. In northeastern Oregon, the followers of an Indian guru are now only a vote away from establishing and controlling Oregon's newest city. The court's adjourned. You're going to set a terrible precedent here. You're going to pave Wasco County with trailer houses and communes and cities. That prophecy was largely ignored. Rancho Rajni soon took over the neighboring town of Antelope and renamed it creating bitterness. Because it's been a sleepy little town, retirement town, and, and uh, too much activity. A private police force armed with semi-automatic rifles protected the Rajneeshis from unwanted outsiders, who they called racist. This mercenary army and air force made many Oregonians uneasy. Uh, there were Rajneeshis that told my husband that we would have to be eliminated. And they can see us what we have done. Ma Nan Sheila Silverman, the Bhagwan secretary, ruled over the commune and made expansion plans. She bought a hotel in Portland, which was later firebombed by the commune's enemies. When her applications for land use permits were opposed, Sheila turned her vengeance on state and county leaders, plotting to kill them. She didn't just plot, she and her dirty trickster sprinkled salmonella on salad bars at 10 restaurants in the Dalles, making 700 people sick. It's the only successful use of biological weapons in U.S. history. They imported transients and registered them to vote in a failed attempt to win a Wasco County election. Under investigation, the Bhagwan decided it was time to leave. Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh with unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. No one was bowing when his plane landed in Charlotte, North Carolina. Escorted to court in handcuffs, he begged to go home to India. That I don't want now to stay in this country. You want to leave? I want to leave. He was deported. While back in Oregon, the dirty tricksters were surrendering to federal marshals. Yes, we're making a voluntary surrender this morning. Too much knowledge. Sheila fled to West Germany, but she too eventually was extradited to be imprisoned for her crimes. Rancho Rajneesh's swimming pool, once crowded with sun-seeking Zunyasins, was abandoned. Today, the ranch is holy ground for young Christians, with no secret police and no political agenda. My uh, family and I may have been victims of that salmonella poisoning. Uh, we were returning from the Pendleton Roundup, and we ate at a restaurant salad bar in the Dalles. And oh. on arriving home, we became sick with flu-like symptoms. Oh, so, you don't say. Yeah, you know, that's reporter involvement, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Well, Mike, that's definitely a story we all remember mm. around here. I remember everyone walking around in the pink clothing and the purple clothing, and I think we even had some family friends who ended up joining at some yeah. point in time. Yeah. We really tested our tolerance as Oregonians. Right. Really, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Fascinating look back. Rajneesh mm -hmm. Param and the Rajneesh, he's part of Oregon history. And Mike's milestones continue every weekday here on the 6 o'clock news until Mike retires on May 31st. Now, tomorrow, Mike takes us along for a look back at all his memorable assignments covering stories from around the world. One of my favorite, when Mike went to Egypt. So you won't want to miss that tomorrow at 6 o'clock.